And so please, um, uh, it is my prayer that uh, your hearts are prepared for the feeding of God's word. I want you to open. I just want, I just look for uh, the word convenience, uh, convenience in the Bible. And uh, let us look at uh, Acts 24, 25, because I'm going to talk about convenience this morning. 24, 25, and there's a word convenient there. And uh, just as well, there is there in that, about Felix, so let us read 24, 25. It says, And he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And this is Paul, reasoning of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. And while listening, it says here, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time when I have convenient season, I will call for thee. And uh, this is what's come out as I look for um, word convenient, right? I'm going to talk about this topic of convenience uh, this morning, but to, to give a a, 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 a brief background to the verse that we just read. Uh, Paul here was brought to trial. As you know, in the Bible, you read the Bible, he had many, many even false accus accusation against him. So he was brought to trial and um, the high priest Ananias, uh, together with the elders, used an orator uh, to can you imagine that they they use a, a, a somebody who is uh, who can talk well, uh, and the name of that orator was Tertullius, just to make sure that um, uh, the accusation they had for Paul uh, would be clear to the governor, and um, and so they used Tertullius to accuse Paul of many things in front of Governor Felix. After Tertullius spoke, Governor Felix gave Paul the chance to air his side of the story. And, uh, you know, and so he was listening. Governor Felix was listening. Uh, and Paul proved all these accusations against him to be false. Not only did Paul defended himself, he used this opportunity to talk about the gospel. And that's what we need to be doing. Every opportunity we have when we, when we, um, when we come across with people, when we, you know, our, 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 our minds, our hearts should be praying, Lord, find me a way to, to open the gospel to this person. And so he, Paul um, took that opportunity to, to share the gospel. But Governor Felix fell to the same hindrance that's keeping many people from doing what is right, which is convenience. Felix understood that, uh, what, that what Paul was saying concerning faith in Christ was right. But to him, it wasn't the convenient time to make a decision to get saved. And I myself uh, could attest to you to this, that um, uh, I have spoken to many people about the gospel, about the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, they would say, uh, well, um, you know, um, I'm just enjoying life. I don't have time for that. I'm just enjoying life. I, I would not have time for that. And, 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 and plus, come on, they say uh, when you follow Jesus, um, I would be not be enjoying these things anymore. And, and so this is not the convenient time for me. And so they don't get saved, just like Philip. So, but it wasn't that Felix, Governor Felix, didn't want to get saved. 
it, it, it was that he felt that he had to wait for a convenient time. And sadly, I would say, I would say this, sadly, Felix found out that convenience never happened to him. And now, as a result, I believe he's burning in hell because he failed to grab the chance. That's why the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. You know, as soon as you hear the gospel, as soon as you hear God's truth, grab it. Tell people, ask people, because you don't know what's really in the corner. You know, you, you, you really do not know whether you'll be living the next hour. And, and, and so ask people to really grab the opportunity to receive the grace of God in receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Convenience has always become the greatest hindrance to many Christians, even to be, you know, to be productive uh, in their Christian work and to do right for God. I have said here uh, quite a few times that, uh, you know, many, many of our countrymen here in Australia, uh, when, when um, before they came to Australia, uh, they would be um, praying, Lord, Lord, uh, please um, help me this application to Australia get approved, Lord, uh, and I will be faithful to you. <clears throat> I've said this many times here, and when they come here to Australia, there is so much abundance, they drown themselves in the abundance. They would not even go to church. They would, they would not have time to attend Bible studies. And for sure, their prayer would be, Lord, bless me, bless me. That's all. It's, it's sad, you know. Convenience has, is the greatest hindrance to many Christians to be productive in their Christian walk. I know that some preachers uh, teach that convenience um, uh, is simple. I, I know there are many, I have heard many preachers that convenience they say is sinful. But um, I, I don't really agree that convenience is sinful. In fact, God is the author of convenience. You know, it can be sinful though. When you allow convenience to dictate your flesh, to stray away from doing things uh, that pleases God and doing the will of God. It can become sinful when you allow convenience to do something only for self rather than to be led by the Holy Spirit, to please God and to honor God. So convenience actually is a grace from God. But this grace have led many to sin against God. When God created the universe, He did so as an act of grace for our convenience. You know, if you remember uh, in, in Genesis chapter 1, when He created, um, he created um, uh, the trees, these are God's grace in the form of rivers and rocks and birds and stars and moons and fruit bearing trees. Uh, these are for convenience. So when Adam and Eve walk on the groves of fruit trees that they did not plant, they did not sow, they discovered convenience from God. Isn't that great? How many, how many times that you did not even strive for and you had that convenience because God provided for you? God is the author of convenience. So convenience per se is not sin. God is the author of convenience. That's what God does. He blesses His people, give them convenience. That's why Moses told Israel, if you look at Deuteronomy, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10 to 13, it, it, it says in, 
Deuteronomy. I'll go, I'll go and open Deuteronomy. It says in Deuteronomy, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham and Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. <laughs> How convenient is that they did not even build, that God gave them cities, goodly cities, and you know, they, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged, and thou diggest not, Vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. Wow, these are convenience from God. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware. Beware, lest thou forget the Lord. Forget the Lord. And how true is that? Many people forget the Lord today because of convenience. Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. This is the instruction. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, serve him, and shalt swear by his name. All these are conveniences from God. And according to James, God is God, uh, James chapter 1, verse 17. God is the giver of every good gift, including every convenience you have in your hands. Can you think of conveniences you have in your hands? You, people could be smart, but not smart. You know, when you say, uh, is it that your, your car is your, yeah, but I work for it. Well, praise God that God gave you strength to work for it and you have that convenience of driving a car, the convenience of having a computer, the convenience of having a, um, one of my men called uh, the phone uh, uh, a comic book because it's, it's like a comic book now. They don't really ring up friends. They don't really ring up to tell people about the Lord. It's just, you know. And so, these are convenience. Cars, homes, convenience. Of, a beautiful shirts that we have, debit cards and cars are conveniences for us. But you know what? None of these things are essentials for you to be breathing. <laughs> it is God who gave you that grace to be breathing. And yet God is not receiving any gratitude from us for all this convenience that he has given us. They make life, you know, these conveniences, they make life easier and more accessible which are which uh, which is actually the very uh, definition of convenience they save time and energy like driving a car from a to z there are grace upon grace would you agree with me so convenience is a wonderful thing it is a gift from god but all of god's blessing Convenience can lead people to sin. This is the way of life in this fallen world. This is the way of life to people who do not know the Lord and who are not really serious in their life with the Lord. But that shouldn't be to us, God's children. We've been bought with a price by nothing but the precious blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. And we are instructed to be different from the world. We are instructed to be different from the world. Ro read Romans 12. Yeah? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. 
you know. We we are instructed in First Peter chapter one, verse fifteen to sixteen to be holy. We are called to be separate from the fallen world by living a holy life for God. And God's people, as God's people, we can greatly benefit from convenience. But how many of us Christians enjoying all these conveniences in life find time to win a soul? Find time to share the gospel? We can greatly benefit from, from, from these conveniences by employing our time and money and energy for many fruitful things uh, that we can do for God. But many have been ensnared by the love of convenience, have been trapped by the love of convenience, and many loth for anything convenient can give as a sense of entitlement for them. All I could say, folks, is let us not turn God's blessing of convenience into a curse. That is very true of convenience and God's many other gifts. People turning it into a curse for them. We turn it into a curse for us. There is nothing wrong with God because He is the giver and daily we receive grace upon grace. And yet, instead of living grateful, we always seem to make all these blessings a hindrance to serve Him. How sad that is. How sad that is that many people cannot now go to church because of the convenience of a job they have. How many people living in the convenience of having a car cannot even go and drive to church? Now tell me if that is an act of gratefulness. Oh well, you know what? I just... I, I have a I, I have a church in my internet. That's not a church. How can you fellowship with yourself? The Bible says fellowship with others. I, I, I please listen to God because you know it is for us to listen to God. It is for our benefit to listen to God. You know. Don't make blessing a hindrance to serve God and to do what is pleasing to God, to do His will. You know what? We are quick to find excuses than humble ourselves before God. Just like when Adam confronted, uh, when God confronted Adam. You know what? God, when God confronted Adam, He blamed the woman. Oh, it was that woman you gave me. Eve was supposed to be God's blessing to him as a helpmate. Then the woman blamed the serpent. Until today, we have this blame game. We continued on this blame game, which us Christians should not be part of it. And yet many Christians also are this in are in are, are participating in this blame game. Many people today even blame God for their sufferings. Yeah, that's very true. They blame God for their sufferings, like blaming fast food for their obesity, blaming alcohol for their for being a drunkard, blaming guns for murdering. Wow! Blaming conveniences for their impatience and selfishness. Blaming conveniences. But our problem are not these conveniences that God gave us grace. Our problem is nothing new at all. It is a hard problem. Loving 
the created things more than the creator. Do not be enslaved to conveniences. As I said, I already told you, many here in Australia stray away from God because they are now enjoying the riches. I, I think it is in Psalm 62, uh, we read uh, last Sunday, where we find God's reminder. You know what's God's reminder in Psalm 62? It says, if riches increase, he said, set your heart if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. And that's what's happening with many Christians today. When their riches increase, they're setting their hearts upon them. You know why? It says in the next few verse of that in, in Psalm 62, I think in the last verse, I think, it's the Lord, it's the verse, uh, the, in that last verse, uh, that the Lord whom belongs mercy will render to every man according to his work. That's very true. That's what the Bible says. We will answer to him at the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord said in Proverbs 10, 22, and many of you perhaps memorize this, Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. Folks, wealth is a great blessing. But let us be careful because the love of wealth is the root of all kinds of evil. You know that in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, convenience is a great blessing, but the love for convenience can be a curse to you. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, Paul tells us that the response of faith towards the gifts of God, including convenience, is never touch not, taste not, handle not. It's not. God did not say touch, touch not convenient, taste not convenience, handle not convenient. In fact, God wants us to enjoy them. And so the response of faith that Paul recommends is in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 that says, Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting, submitting in the fear of God. Folks, God's blessing are meant for us to be thankful. A thankful heart, a thankful person will not act just on mere words, but he will do something to please God because he is thankful. And thankfulness shouldn't be just mere words like the world does, but consciously doing the will of God to give him the pleasure. One way to show our thankfulness is to turn ourselves into grateful sharers of the gospel. Turn yourself to be graceful sharer of the gospel. Be willing sacrificers. Oh, you know, it's it's kind of embarrassing to be telling people, you know, and, and, and you know, one time I tried this and, and, and somebody just turned, it's very insulting, they just turned. So what? Be willing sacrificers and be joyful servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that person who turn away from you will one day remember, oh, I should have received Jesus. That person shared the gospel to me. Remember that rich man? He did not ask, why am I here, Lord? He did not ask, why am I in hell? No. <laughs> you know what he asked? Lord, tell Abraham to tell my brothers Tell them, tell them. This, this, I am in a dreadful place. I don't want them to come here. Too late, too late. You know? So many people, 
I hope that you will share the gospel. Be willing sacrifices. Know that everything we have and all the conveniences we have are graces from God. It is all grace from the beginning to end. Many people will go to hell because they are failing to see that convenience that God gave them is God's way for them to see the grace of God. I was walking, I was talking to one of our men uh, in the church last Sunday and he is a nurse and he he has a a a a, a, doc, a friend a doctor friend and um and he heard from his friend that the parents of these doctors used to be Christians you know and so my 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 brother in the lord um told this doctor brother ray uh told this doctor you know to receive jesus as lord and savior you know what this doctor told him i have everything i need brother ray i don't need god they turned the goodness of god and make them a curse for them Many people reject God because they enjoy all the convenience they can have in life. Also, many never accomplish anything in their Christian life because of convenience. Never accomplish anything for them to act what is right in the sight of God. Many churches in fact, will never be built because many of God's people think it's not convenient to be sharing their hard-earned money to others to help others build the church. Many mission works in reaching the lost will remain to be just a talk because some Christians think it is not convenient to be sharing their hard-earned money to missionaries. Folks, you cannot do a great work for God if you allow yourself to be ungrateful in your convenience. God's gift of convenience is meant for us to come to Him in gratitude. It's because grateful people, grateful people give. They sacrifice. Grateful people sacrifice. They will never be but the believer you are supposed folks if you are saved now you should you should be you'd never be the believer you are supposed to be if you make convenience to be your own world you will never be the believer that you are supposed to be if you let convenience rule you so let me share you very quickly before i close few thoughts about conveniences. People don't like anything that will bring them. People will do not like anything that will can bring them um, out of convenience. For instance, number one, doing right for God will often bring you out of convenience. And that's true. Doing right thing for God will bring you out of convenience. Just like Felix. On our story, I have met people reject the offer of salvation because they said they will wait for the most convenient time to do. They say, if I would listen to you, I would no longer be able to drink and, and you know, and enjoy with friends and enjoy nightlife out in the world. And the next thing you find is that they actually receive. Some of this actually receive Jesus in a most inconvenient way because they are now in their hospital you know with cancer with with a liver problem because of their drinking well praise god that god has still given you a chance to receive him you know when they are sick that was that's why not receive jesus when it's convenient don't wait for this inconvenient time in your life to be confined in the hospital, for you to drink, for, for you to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Folks, doing right may not be convenient most of the time. 
We don't do right because it is convenient. We do right because it is right. And the right thing to do before God. Do not let convenience dictate your actions. Always do right for God because it is the right thing to do in whatever circumstances you face. Number two, character is the only antidote. Character. So check your character. Character is the only antidote to combat the convenience mindset. It takes character to do right when it is not convenient. Character makes you do right when you don't feel like doing right. Character makes you do right when it's not popular to do right. Character makes you to do right when doing right results in persecution. It was not convenient for the three Hebrew children not to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image, but they stood for the right and they showed their character. They stood for the right. Although they, they knew that they would die, they could die for their choice. But you know what? God is there watching you, watching your faith. And God saved the Hebrew children. Doing right all the time is never done by convenience. Returning the tithe is never done by convenience. Supporting mission is never done by convenience. But it is done by character. If you want to do right all the time, you must let godly character dictate your actions instead of convenience. Thirdly, the greatest blessing and accomplishments are the result of doing what you are supposed to do when it is not convenient. The greatest blessings and accomplishments are the result of doing what you are supposed to do when it is not convenient. Folks, you rob yourself of great accomplishments if you let convenience dictate your actions. Let me repeat what I just said before. The greatest accomplishments of life are not achieved by convenience, but by character. In fact, convenience will only tempt you to deny God. You will only live a life of what could have been if you let convenience continue to hinder you from doing what you're supposed to do for God. Folks, I'm closing, and I hope really you were blessed with this. Stop letting, letting convenience rob you of the blessing of enjoying great accomplishments for God's glory. Do right and be careful that conveniences will not fill your life with regrets, with what could have been, had you done what you knew to do for the glory of God.